Hi there. Today I wanted to talk about a question that I get asked a lot. Uh, I think most trans people get asked at some point, which is, when did you first know you were trans? Uh, for me, it's difficult to say. Uh, the word two-spirit wasn't around when I was a kid. I think it would have been really helpful for me in figuring myself out. Uh, as it was, I, as I was growing up, I was only aware of the existence of three gender roles. There were women, and men, and there were transsexuals. And in my understanding of the world, everyone had to be either a man or a woman. You could go from being a man to a woman as a transsexual, but you couldn't go from being a woman to a man. Man was the elite, respected, dominant social role. Uh, you could lose that dominance, but there was no way, as someone who didn't have it in the first place, to uh, get society to bestow that role on you. When I looked at the people around me, I saw masculine women uh, who were generally mocked and viewed as worthless and trying to be men, feminine women who would receive superficial praise uh, while also being viewed as worthless by virtue of being feminine, masculine men who were heroes, and feminine men and trans women who were intensely degraded but also within specific circles viewed as being heroic or brave in their own right. Uh, for some reason, uh, they were viewed as challenging gender norms in a way that no one who was assigned female at birth could. Uh, thinking about it now, I think it's because our society attaches value to gender conformity and also to masculinity. So that someone who is female assigned is always going to be one or the other. They are either uh, conforming to their assigned gender and being uh, devalued as feminine, or they are uh, being masculine and devalued as uh, gender non-conforming. So there's uh, no real way to win. Whereas someone who's assigned male is either conforming to their gender, um, in which case they, they get all the praise and all the power, or they're not, in which case they're at the absolute bottom of the totem pole. Uh, it's, it's all or nothing for them. Uh, I felt a strong affinity to these uh, male-assigned gender rebels, and I felt a, a desire to challenge gender in that way, but it didn't seem like a possibility. Now, I, I can't say when I started thinking about these things. Uh, as far back as I can remember, I've had dreams in which I was a boy, or in between boy and girl. Uh, I would often be mistaken for a boy, and that always gave me a warm, fuzzy feeling. Uh, at the same time, I was very proud to be a girl. I read up on women's history, I volunteered at the local women's center, I wore a purple ribbon and served the drinks on the December 6th candlelight vigil uh, uh, in recognition of violence against women. But there was still, there was something that didn't quite fit right in, in all of this. Um, looking back at my journals is very useful. There's one from when I was 14 that says, I wish I were a boy. If I were a boy, I'd be a drag queen. Uh, and another that says, I've heard of a woman trapped in the body of a man. I wonder if it's possible to be a man trapped in the body of a woman. So as I was saying, the idea was there, but I didn't have any role models. I didn't have uh, anything to indicate that there was a even a possibility, uh, as far as I was aware, of, of being a, uh, a gender rebel as someone who was female assigned. Um, by the time I was 16, I had toyed with the thought that I might be transsexual, um, but I had concluded that I couldn't possibly be. At that point, all the depictions of transsexuals that I had seen or heard of 
indicated that they were mentally ill in a way that I didn't relate to. Uh, they were always depicted as having a, uh, apart from always being male assigned, they were depicted as always having a pathological obsession with femininity. Uh, and that wasn't how I felt about masculinity. They were, uh, they were people who hated their bodies. They were 100% women. Uh, they were always heterosexual in that they were uh, solely attracted to men. And they conformed to the most rigid stereotype uh, or even um, uh, caricature of femininity. And that, that wasn't how I felt. I didn't feel... I didn't want to be 100% man. I was attracted to both men and women, and I didn't hate my body. I just wanted to change it a little. Uh, so I, I wanted something in between male and female. I wanted something that would allow me to continue taking pride in this powerful female body that bleeds and can give birth and has... Uh, survived through hundreds of years of violence. I, I didn't want to have to walk away from that. I, I just wanted a beard and to be able to sing tenor. Uh, I fantasized about going on testosterone and passing as a man, but I didn't feel like I would die if I wasn't allowed to. And that was the impression that I'd always had of transsexuals, that they could not survive without medical intervention. Um, you know, when I was a teenager, I saw a couple of trans men on CBC, and uh, that was the, the first that I had... Or, I, I saw a couple of trans men on CBC, so that was the first that I, I knew that that was uh, a possibility. I still couldn't think of myself as being mentally ill or pathologically obsessed with gender, even though to watch my videos now, you would probably say that I'm pretty obsessed with it. Um, I also remember that my mom was visiting me at the time, and she saw the CBC special and reacted very negatively. Um, my mom is a lesbian, and she was, uh, and, and a feminist, and she was always very supportive of trans women. She saw them as, as being brave and heroic. Uh, but when she saw these two trans men, she was appalled. She was revolted. Uh, she said that these were people who just couldn't cope with being fat, ugly women, and that it was a tragedy that they felt that they needed to uh, pretend to be men. Now, my initial response was I was in awe of these men. This was the first thing, or this was the closest thing that I had ever seen to a gender role that I could relate to. And my mother's reaction made me doubt that response. It made me see them more negatively. And it also made me very apprehensive. I started to realize that if I did go down this path, uh, that I might be rejected even by the queer community and even by people who were supportive of male to female trans people. So that was a, a big moment for me, both seeing F to M's for the first time and seeing this reaction to them. Uh, now the next pivotal moment for me, and I would say the most pivotal moment for me, happened a couple of months later in Miss Jane's uh, grade 12 English class. I was 17 and there was one girl in my year who was the popular girl. Uh, I had a crush on her. I think most of the students had a crush on her. Uh, we had an English assignment, which was to pick a topic that we were passionate about and give a speech on it to the class. Now, I can't even remember what my speech was on. It was probably something kind of insignificant and petty. But this popular girl gave a speech on mandatory gender labels on government-issued ID and why they should be abolished. Uh, in her speech, she talked about how it, it was the rigid adherence to gender binary 
that was pathological, not the trans people. And I was stunned. I was, I had never heard anything like this before. She argued that gender uh, should be neither biologically determined nor government regulated, that there were countless uh, gender possibilities and that people should have the right to be one or the other or neither or both or in between, and that gender variety is normal and healthy and it should be supported. And this just made a light bulb go off in my head. For the first time, I saw a model of gender that had a place in it uh, for me, a place where I could feel comfortable. It took about a year and a half after that before I actually started referring to myself as transgender. Um, the first time I was 19 and starting a new job in Alberta, I was filling out a form about my, uh, my learning style and how I would prefer to receive training and feedback. And the last question was, is there anything else we should know about you? And I wrote, I'm transgender. Uh, but that moment in Miss Jane's grade 12 English class was what launched me in that direction and what allowed me to get to that point. Uh, incidentally, the woman who gave that speech has gone on to be a public advocate for queer rights, so I suppose it wouldn't hurt to name her. Uh, this was the incredibly talented actress Ellen Page. Uh, ten years before her big coming out, she was already making a difference and fighting the good fight. She certainly made a difference in my life. So, I was 18 when I first heard of this thing called Two-Spirit. Um, I had had a vision of myself walking through fire and the fire burnt off my breasts and melted the flesh around my groin until it uh, dripped and formed into a, a penis. When I spoke of this vision in native circles, I was informed that the calling to a cross-gendered life was actually an ancient tradition and came with certain powers and responsibilities. So at 19, I started the process of coming out to friends and family, uh, meeting other trans people, and making plans for medical transition, which eventually uh, took me to Toronto. For that reason, among others, the number 19 is uh, very significant to me. That's how many years it took to, for me to fully recognize myself as transgender and as two-spirit. Uh, and I'm grateful to all the people who helped me along the way. So that's all for today. Uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Uh, take care.